Do you have any projects where the tests take a substantial amount of time of the build? It turns out that if you're using Gradle, you can run your tests in parallel with a one-line change to the build file. Notice my shocked face here. Let's move to the actual code. Now what I'm looking at here is the documentation at gradle.org. I went into gradle.org and went to the documentation link and this is the section called Execute Tests in Parallel, which is part of the performance section of the user manual. And as it says, Gradle can run multiple test cases in parallel. To enable this feature, all you have to do is override the value of max parallel forks on a test task. For best performance, use some number less than or equal to the number of available CPU cores, and they've written out a little calculation here in Groovy, as well as one in Kotlin. So you can use whichever one you like. Tests in parallel must be independent, of course, because if they're sharing a resources, the interaction could make them unpredictable. That's not terribly surprising. Let's take a look at this in practice. I have here a project called Parallel Tests Groovy DSL. I have a separate project here, which has the same code in it, but it's called Parallel Tests in the Kotlin DSL as well. So looking at the Groovy DSL, you can see that I'm using the Java plugin. I'm downloading my dependencies from Maven Central. The one dependency I'm using is JUnit Jupyter, that's JUnit 5. And this is code that will be added to your build when you create a project inside of IntelliJ. It'll say, for the test task, let's use JUnit Platform, which is a short way of saying, yes, we're using Jupyter or JUnit 5. So that's fine. Now, if I was to run this, let me show you what tests I have. I have a class called single test, which is really a single test class, but I have four individual tests in it labeled one through four, and each one just sleeps for a second and asserts true. So I just throw the interrupted exception so I don't have to worry about that. Now, if I run this by itself inside the IDE, you'll see it'll take one, two, three, four seconds, just exactly what you would expect. And that's fine. And in fact, when I put in my max parallel forks parameter, that's not going to change because what max parallel forks will do is it will run multiple test classes in parallel not the individual tests in a single class. So to prove that, what I've done is I separated each of those into separate classes, multiple tests one, two, three, and four. See, they're all separate that way. Now, if I run the Gradle tests all together, so let me actually run Gradle test dash dash rerun. So I'll run them all, just guarantee that they'll all run then what you'll see here is that each one is still taking a second to run. And then in the single test, they're also taking, each one's taking a second to run. And it's taking about eight or nine seconds roughly to do the whole thing. So let me modify my test block and put in max parallel forks. Now you can put in a formula and I'll get to that, but let me just pick a number. I've got five test classes. Let me set that to five. Now. I know that on my particular machine, the JVM reports that I have 10 cores, which is only true via virtualization, but regardless, five is a reasonable number for me. You want to experiment to find out a good one for you. Now, if I rerun what I just ran, the funny part is, is that the single test, as you see, took four seconds again, but the multiple tests, they all run in parallel. So even though they each report one second, for the amount of time they took. In fact, it didn't take much time at all. If I run this from the command line, say using the, the G time command, that's a GNU time or whatever, then I can say, let's do Gradle W test dash dash tests, and I'll just run multiple test star. So I could run just the tests in that pattern and watch it happen, bang, they all ran in, well, as they say, uh, well, it looks like we got like 2.44 seconds or something like that. I'm surprised it took that long. Uh, let me run it again and see if the cache makes any, well, now it's all cache, so I'm gonna have to put in my dash dash rerun flag to make sure they all run in parallel. And again, they just zip through very, very quickly, whereas the single test is the same. Now, looking at this in the Kotlin DSL, 
you see that I've got the Java plugin, again, Maven Central for the repository, JUnit Jupyter for the download, and there's my task.named test of type test where I set the use JUnit platform parameter. Now, again, this was generated by IntelliJ. This is lazy in terms of configuration. This only says if the task execution graph has a task called test of type test, then we invoke this. Whereas the other way over here in the Groovy DSL, that was eager. That will be configured whether I run the test task or not. Now it's easy enough to change it. All I'd have to do here is go tasks.named again, uh, quote test, but I'll also give it the hint of what the data type is so that I get my code assist back again. So now that would be configured lazily. Again, in this particular demo, all I'm doing is running tests, so it doesn't really make any difference. Let me show you, however, in the Gradle one, that once again, if I run everything without specifying max parallel forks, I can just run the test task, for example, or in fact, I'll run clean and test just to be really explicit about it. And you'll see everything will take the individual second for every single test all the way through. But now if I add my max parallel forks again, I could set it to five explicitly and rerun again with the clean starting everything from scratch. And you see that the multiple tests are already done to single tests that are taking their time going through one by one. Now, what's the formula they put in here? I could see that for the Kotlin one, it looks like this, just to take a look at the example they put in. Let's make that minimize, get that out of the way. So this says, get the runtime. Oh, I've got an extra brace, sorry about that. Uh, get the runtime and then get the number of available processors and divide by two. And if that value is not null, then take it if it is greater than zero. Otherwise with the Elvis operator, we use a one, which, okay, fine. But it's gonna give me the same value. I picked five for a reason. In the groovy one, again, the syntax they used over here was simply runtime dot property runtime, which is again, the get runtime method, get the available processors, do an integer division by two. And if that's not zero or null, then if it is, then use it, otherwise use one. And that did it. I mean, basically all I did was I modified the max parallel forks property in the test task. As it says, sets the maximum number of test processes to start in parallel. By default, Gradle executes a single test class, single test class <laughs> at a time, but allows multiple test tasks to run in parallel. And that's what we've done. We've set it to a number other than one to get parallel execution. So I honestly use this all the time. It's part, it's a subset of Gradle's more general mechanism for doing worker threads and trying to run tasks in parallel, but that's well beyond the scope of what we're talking about. I'm saying you can use this immediately. You can go to any Java-based project and maybe a lot of ones that aren't, but I know the Java ones work, and just go in the ta test block and set max parallel forks to a number that isn't one and see what it does for your tests. Or you could put in a formula and see if that helps a lot as well. And you have improved the efficiency and the speed of your independent tests with one line of Gradle code. So I hope that helps you. Good luck. And if you like this, please like the, the video and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos every week. Take care, everybody. Good luck.